I have an assignment for you. <laughs> Over the next week, I want you to spend 15 minutes in a face-to-face -face conversation with a stranger. I'm serious. A week, 15 minutes, a face-to-face -face conversation with a stranger. That means you have to put down your media. <laughs> now that was the first assignment in my undergraduate class on human communication technology. And it was that way for many years without any kind of real problems. Occasionally you'd encounter a student who had, you know, apprehension, communication apprehension. And they would come up to me after the assignment and ask me a few questions. And with a little encouragement, they all got through it. That was the way it was for a long, long time. And then in the late 2000s, I think it was 2008, there was Alice. Alice raised her hand right after the assignment. And she said, Dr. Salem, 15 minutes? 15 minutes is a long time. <laughs> now there are a lot of things working there. And it gets to be pretty complex. This is a fractal. A fractal is a representation of a complex process. And all you need to understand about this fractal is that first of all, there are curved lines, kind of like waves, and there are spaces between the lines. And what this fractal is, is it's a visual representation of a mathematical process. One you've all become too familiar with, algorithms. In a complex process, there is a formula. That's where the spaces are. And there are numbers that feed into the formula. That's where the lines are. So what this is a picture of is numbers feeding into a formula, leading to other numbers which feed into the same formula. Got the idea? If you look at it one way, if you look from the outside, the direction is inward. If you look at it from the inside, the direction is outward. Now this formula has several properties, and they are the properties of every complex process. First, this particular formula repeats itself because in every space there is the same formula. So that means the process is iterative. And also, what you can see from this picture is that there's one curved line, the process, and another curved line, and a process, and another curved line, which means that the formula takes the output from one cycle and uses it as input for the next cycle, so this formula is recursive. It's iterative, it's recursive, and things build. Without any kind of interruption, if we start from the center and move out, it will go to the outside and disintegrate. And to be honest, what happens is, if we're talking about the numbers that represent each of those curves, by the time you get to the outside, it looks random. On the other hand, this thing could move itself onto the inside. And when it gets to the inside, it gets very brittle and it can destroy itself in there because there is so much similarity there. So it's iterative, it's recursive, and things can build. But we want, what we want is we want the sweet spot in there. We want the place in the middle that we can kind of maintain so we can move out or in or out, maintain kind of a vitality. And there was one last characteristic of this, something you all know about. These processes have parameters. And you know what a parameter is because you've had to deal with a setting on your phone or in a computer game or in an app. That's all it is. It's a condition. In this case, for your assignment, you have 15 minutes. It has to be face to face with no other technology. It has to be a stranger. So which of these particular things on this parameter, of these parameters, is Alice most worried about? Is it the 15 minutes really? This is yin yang, right? This is an old ancient Chinese symbol. It represents a dynamic equilibrium between opposites. The yin part, which is the dark part, 
and the yang part are opposites, but they maintain an equilibrium, a tension. It could be the model of that sweet spot that we're after. In this case, I want to talk about it related to that stranger. Because that yin-yang could represent similar to me, different from me. And see, what Alice wants is Alice wants the dark spot. She wants the comfort of the similarity. And she doesn't want the dynamism for some reason or another. She's uncomfortable with that. Communication is a complex process. It has a formula, rules. We know the rules for communicating with people. When we first meet people, they're cultural rules. We know what to say, what not to say, or how to say it. And as we develop close relationships with people, we develop our own rules. And we know this is what I can say to this person. This is not what I can say to this person. And you know, there are rules at work, and there are rules at home, and there are rules with your brother and sister, and there are rules with your wife. And guess what? If you forget the rules are different, there's gonna be problems. <laughs> so there are rules, and they are recursive. But what would be wrong is to think of a single message as the input. Communication is not about the exchange and give and take of messages. It's about creating something together. It's about creating conversation. So the input into the process is where we were at one point in the conversation leading to the next point in the conversation. It's like two people trying to make the same gumbo. One person comes up and samples it, Mm, puts a little in, tastes it, leaves. The other person comes up, sounds, mm, puts a little bit in, leaves. We're making something together. It can get out of hand. It can start at one place and move to someplace else. It can be really damaging conflict. It can get out of hand the other way. It can start at one place and become really, really boring. <laughs> right? So communication is that. What is Alice's problem with that? Why should that be a difficulty for her? Face-to-face -face communication, is that the problem? Ah, we've had a change of parameter. Here's a couple that are present physically and absent mentally and emotionally. They are alone together. We spend a lot of time with the current technology, but we're not communicating. What are we doing? We're entertaining ourselves. We're amusing ourselves to death, as they say. But it's not the technology, it's us. We use it. We make decisions on how to act with that technology. The average American spends over seven hours a day staring at a screen. Seven hours plus a day staring at a screen. It's a job. Right? So that's what we look at when we look at that. What do we see when we look at that screen? Well, sometimes we're reading. Sometimes we're reading what somebody else posted. Sometimes we're watching something, streaming video, right? It's entertainment. It's that amusing ourselves to death. It's presentation. So we become very, very sophisticated at presenting things, at being more dramatic about things, and we get less and less skilled at conversation, at building that thing together, at creating those relationships. Is that what Alice's problem is? Is Alice's problem that she's not sure of herself? I mean, when people do that stuff online, they get likes and they get followers. It's all validation, isn't it? Validation, validation sounds good, we used to get validation from friends, but in the last 30 years, we have lost one close friend. 30 years ago when they asked people, who are the people you want to talk to when you have something really important to talk about who are not members of your family? The answer was a little over four. Now the answer is just a little under three. We've lost close friends. We're seeking that validation online. Is that what we're trying to do? We have workshops now, you know. On 36 questions, you can ask somebody to build intimacy. <laughs> we have workshops on how to talk to strangers. We've lost a friend, 
We've lost some of our competence at conversation. What if things build? What if you make that decision for similarity over and over again? What does that look like? This. This is Manny. Manny is like Alice. Manny was a student in one of my human communication technology classes. And Manny, like everybody else in the class, filled out a list of the people that he talks to and communicates with several times a month. However, he communicates with them. Text message, you could communicate exchanging text messages, right? You could do it posting, not very often, but you could, right? Face to face, of course, the telephone. These are the people he communicates with several times a month or more. Now, Manny's not in the picture. There's 20 people here. We all know that if we stuck Manny in the picture, all these lines would come to Manny, right? But this is a picture of who those 20 people communicate with amongst themselves. So with 20 people, you could have 20 separate circles, nobody communicating with each other. You could have three groups, four groups, five groups, even six groups with 20 people. They could be friends from high school, friends in college, co-workers, members of my club, whatever, right? Could be that. But no, we have two groups here. Two groups of people who are the same. The smaller group, family, that should be obvious. The larger group, same ethnicity, almost completely. Same gender, almost completely. Same socioeconomic, almost completely. Really? That means you could talk to any one of those people and be talking to any other one at the same time. It means that if this is who you are, you're just one of those people that are in that group. Do you know at one university, the majority of incoming students asked that their dorm room roommate not have a different political orientation than they do? At one university, a large minority of students asked for segregated dorms. This is a picture of the bubble. This is a picture of the echo chamber. This is not where I want you. I want you to have those conversations with strangers, 15 minutes face to face. I want you to have a fractal that looks like this that's more exciting. Have that 15 minute face-to-face -face conversation with a stranger. Learn something, it's a stranger, they're different. Difference is the basis for information. Truth, as one person says, emerges in all those wonderful differings. Have a real conversation with somebody. Conversation doesn't just shuffle the cards, it creates new ones. Spend 15 minutes with a stranger communicating with them. Take the 15 minutes to learn about whatever the topics are about, about how relationships develop, about the other person, and about you. 15 minutes is not a long time.